consultant for Richmond Chile. So thank you, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon in this webinar that we have called Flip It Over, which is about Flip Classroom. Um, so thank you again. I hope everyone is safe and taking care of your loved ones here. Um, I mean, through these crazy times, right? Uh, let me, uh, hold on, a, okay, let me just stop my, okay, here we go. Um, I always like to start my, or begin my workshops with a hands-on activity, with a, practice, with a practical activity. Unfortunately, <laughs> we cannot do that as we are miles and kilometers away, right? Um, so I decided to, uh, start with a joke instead um and as i still I, I mean i would still like to know who my audience is, audience is so i have prepared a quick poll that you will see in your screens there are three questions with three um alternatives so read the question and select the alternative that uh, you relate to the most, okay? Uh, this is mainly for me and for everybody, just to get to know each other a little bit, okay? Although technology helps us in this process, but it's just to get to know each other a little bit. So uh, here we go. You will have a minute to uh, answer, to read and answer the questions, and then we continue, okay? Here we have them. These are the three questions let me just start. okay here we have number one how familiar is the flipped classroom methodology for you a it's very familiar it's part of my institution's mission statement uh letter b i know something but it's always good to keep the knowledge up to date or i'm not familiar with this approach number two says how willing are you to innovate very willing to do so a little Changes can be scary sometimes, or I prefer working with the traditional methods and approaches. And number three, how do you feel today? And be honest, okay? Happy and motivated, a bit tired, or this pandemic is driving me crazy. Let's see how you feel about it. We'll have um, a couple of seconds, more seconds to see how this poll goes okay 82 84 85 yes everybody's voting we have 181 participants uh-huh yes i can okay. see that yes fantastic well yes we'll wait for maybe a few more seconds So everybody can have the chance to vote. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. Very willing to do so. Oh, it's interesting. 80%. You're very willing to innovate. That's great. That's fantastic. And most of you also, 55%. You feel happy and motivated. This is what I'm reading so far, but I will share the uh, results with you. Okay. Okay, I think I think we're ready. Um, 130 out of 181. Maybe there are still a couple of teachers voting. Yes. Some people are still voting. Just a few more seconds. And then we will uh, close it. Okay. Okay. We are ready. Let's see. And let's share the results. Here we have them. Uh, can you see them, uh, Jime? They're yes, there, right? You can see them. They're there. Uh -huh. Yes. Fantastic. OK, interesting. How familiar is the flipped classroom uh, methodology for you? I know something, but it's always good to keep knowledge up to date. Fantastic. Yes. 
how willing are you to innovate? Wow, yes, very willing to do so. Fantastic. And how do you feel today? Wow, this is interesting. Happy and motivated. Yes, a bit tired, some of you, of course, it's the afternoon. Uh, and only 19, <laughs> 19 teachers feel that the pandemic is driving, driving them crazy. <laughs> interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for, for uh, sharing your thoughts. Okay, let's continue then. Um, <clears throat> So the uh, main goals for this session are basically these three. The idea is that we can learn a little bit about the flipped classroom model and its basis, that we can compare the flipped classroom model with the traditional one. And at the end, of course, and uh, most importantly, that we can highlight some tools that will help you with uh, the flipped classroom practices, okay? So here we go. If we had to put it like in very, very simple words, like to have an overview of, uh, in order to answer the question, what is flipped classroom? We would have to say this, that it is a pedagogical model that is based on inverting the traditional structure of classroom instruction through the use of information and communication technologies. Okay, as simple as that, it's based on inverting the traditional things that we have done using uh, information and communication technologies. Mm -hmm. So if we think of what we have done so far and what we still do, right, in the traditional classroom model, um, we would have to say that teachers are the ones who prepare and deliver the instruction on topic, on concepts, on subjects to the entire class, right? To the whole class. And what happens with the students? The students sieve, sit, sorry, in, in a passive way, right? They listen to the teacher. Well, we believe that they listen to us, right? But they listen and even, and if we're working with teenagers or with adults, they take note. Um, students complete tasks with or without a specific purpose sometimes. Um, homework is assigned mainly to consolidate understanding. Here the teacher's role is just to lead the lesson and to pass on uh, knowledge, mainly, okay, mainly. I'm not saying that everyone, in, everyone does that, but mainly this is like the role of the teacher in the traditional format. I'm going see? to interrupt you for a second. I just want to make sure that everyone can see Paulina's screen. Hola, Juli. Because Monica is telling me she can see it, but I can. Can you type a yes or no in the chat room for me, please? Oh, okay, yeah. Francisca can, Daniela can. Oh, okay. So whoever they is can not... see it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So whoever is not seeing Paulina's screen, it's your computer. <laughs> it's uh -huh. not Paulina. Sorry, Paulina. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you. You can interrupt me as many times as you want, Jimmy, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure that everyone can, so yes, Pauli, over thank to you. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we continue then, okay. Um, so this is basically some main like features of the traditional model so far. So what happens with the uh, flipped classroom? In the flipped classroom model, we could say that the teacher is the one who prepares and selects the materials for students to access the instruction on, again, topic, concepts, you know, subject, but outside the class. What happens with the students here is that the students watch online or digital videos at home. Students do activities and exercises as part of homework to prepare for the lessons in advance. The class time is uh, mainly devoted to active learning. Instead of students sitting in a passive way, here class time is devoted to active learning, to extend the activities, to consolidate contents and, contents and so on. Students receive a lot of support from the teacher with the flipped classroom model. And here, and uh, most importantly, the teacher, teacher's role is to be a facilitator of the knowledge, not just pass it on. Mm -hmm. 
So if you have to put it in a in a picture, like a very in a very you know graphic way, this is what we would have, right? This is uh, uh, like a summary of the flipped classroom. Put it in pictures. If we put it in pictures, so here we have what happens out of the class, outside the classroom, and what happens in the class during the lesson, right? So what students have to do before the class and outside the classroom is that they have to prepare uh, um, to participate actively in class activities, right? So that during the lesson, during the class time, you know, they can practice applying the key concepts and they can also receive feedback from the teacher and feedback from their peers as well. And we go back outside of the class again and students check their understanding. And this is the part in which they can extend their learning. They can extend, they can continue doing activities and go back to the first thing that they studied at the beginning. And they do that after the class, okay? So this is in, if we put it in a picture, right? How the, the flip, uh, classroom model uh, is seen. Although, um, well, I have to be fair and say that this approach is not really that new, uh, although it seems that with everything that is happening uh, throughout, I mean, and around the globe right now, uh, um, maybe it seems that it has raised again, right? And more people are um, interested in getting to know a little bit more about these kind of approaches. So we would have to go back a little bit in time and see uh, where and when these all started. So first of all, in 1998, um, by that time, the flipped classroom approach had already been uh, used for years in some disciplines, but especially in uh, the ones related to the humanities. So these two ladies right here, Barbara, uh, Barbara uh, Walford and Virginia, Virginia, yes, Virginia Johnson, Johnson Anderson, they proposed a model in which the students gain first exposure uh, learning prior to the class and also in uh, prior to the class and in the class they focus on the processing part of the learning so they can synthesize they can analyze they can solve problems etc so to ensure that students do the preparation that is necessary for a productive class time uh, these two wonderful ladies propose an assignment-based model in which students produce the work prior to the class, right? Produce work, they write, they solve problems before coming to class. So students receive feedback, effective feedback, through the activities that usually happen uh, during the class, right? Uh, and what that, what that did in, in eventually was that the time that the teacher needed to check like students' written work was a lot. So what it did was that it reduced the time of the teacher, right? In, in terms of, you know, checking long and long and extensive papers. What happened uh, in 2000 is that uh, Leigh Platt and uh, Treglia described a very similar approach and they call it the inverted classroom. And they reported this, um, uh, the application of this in an introductory uh, economics course in college. Uh, so what they did was that they initiated this experiment with their students in response to what they observed. And they observed that the traditional classroom model or the traditional lecture, if we think of college, was not compatible with all the learning styles of students. So in order to make the course and the classes more compatible with, their, uh, with the variety of learning styles that they had, they designed, they began to design this uh, inverted classroom model. So they started to provide their students with a variety of tools to gain this first exposure to the material outside the class, like textbook readings, lecture videos, PowerPoint presentations, printable slides, et cetera, et cetera. So, this, and I'm sure that this is familiar for those teachers who teach at the university or college students, because at the university, we are used to work like this, right? We do that with our students. We send materials so they can come to class prepared and in advance. 
A year later, in 2001, Masur and Crouch described a slightly modified form of the flipped classroom model, and they call it peer instruction. So uh, like the approaches described uh, by the previous authors, the peer instruction model requires that students, again, gain the first exposure prior to class and use some assignments like very uh, quick, uh, quick, uh, simple quizzes to help ensure that they come to class prepared. So what they do in class is um, uh, the, the, the class time is structured around these mini lectures and answering some conceptual questions. And those conceptual questions, like big question also, if you want to call them like that, uh, all the students had to answer those uh, uh, big questions. So what happens is that uh, with this, uh, with this um, model is that the teacher could see if all the students were answering correctly or if there were uh, a lot of uh, a large number of students that didn't answer correctly so what happens is that uh, the teacher decides to go back to the question and make the students work in peers right so they can help each other so students become also instructors because they uh, as they get together in groups they get together to the right answer so that was uh, the slightly modified form of the flipped classroom that these two authors came up with. And um, in 2012, we have here um, Jonathan Berman and Aaron Sams. Actually, they were among the first, they were chemistry teachers, I believe, and they were among the first who actually flipped their classrooms. They found out that the students uh, wanted them, they wanted their teachers to answer their questions and help them when they didn't understand uh, course concepts. So uh, they realized that students did not require the same level of support when the teacher was teaching them, when the teacher was lecturing them or when, when they were reviewing contents. So here, flipping the classroom, uh, alters the instruction by shifting from uh, in-class delivery that is offered often a very teacher-centered uh, so to a class that involves more uh, student participation and more discussion and more analysis and so on. So uh, in their study, they, uh, they, their study described that the students move at their own pace and also uh, showed that teachers have more time to one-to-one -to -one interaction, to one-to-one -to -one work with the students who need more support, okay? So um, they also find, found out that students demonstrated deeper understanding. They assumed also more responsibility for their learning process, and de definitely they became more um, self-directed, okay? So uh, that is a little bit of history, okay? So we can all know where, uh, where and when this whole concept of flipped classroom began. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have to think, uh, or as that we are teachers and we belong to an institution, and as we are, we are part of an institution, if we believe that this is the path, right, to accomplish our, our goals, if we, if we believe that the flipped classroom model is the path, we would have to think like in very general terms of instructional design. Um, but in very, very general terms because we are not instructional designers, right? Um, instructional design, in, again, in simple words, is, um, is a, well, it has the, the specifications and the theory that is going to ensure the quality of instruction. So uh, it is the whole entire process of analyzing the learning needs and the learning goals, okay? Uh, in order to come up with a system that is going to help us as an institution or as teachers to meet those needs, okay? Um, and we uh, have, or there are several, you know, uh, commonly accepted models, but the ADI model, the first one that we have over there is uh, the most popular one and is the generic process that it is uh, traditionally used by the instructional designers uh, if they want to come up with these uh, uh, systems to meet the needs and uh, to achieve the goals they have. And what ADI means, 
Do we have it? ADI is, an, is the acronym and ADI stands for uh, these five stages. We have, have analysis, we have design, we have development, we have implementation, and we have evaluation. So this model basically represents a very dynamic and a very flexible uh, guideline for building effective training and effective performance support, uh, support tools. Mm -hmm. So if we uh, want to be part of this, you know, uh, flip classroom approach and be part of and, and start using it, start working it, and maybe if the institution want to, wants to establish it as part of their mission statement, this is what we would have to uh, see or do. First, we have to analyze an instructional problem, right? We have to establish the goals and identify students' prior knowledge and skills, right? So let's say that we have seen that students have had uh, always trouble um, working with specific contents, right? So we detect an instructional problem and we move from there on. What we do then in the design stage is that we design the structure of the flipped classroom. We have to think of the learning objectives, the assessment instrument, the contents, the lesson plans, and also the media selection, right? The tools, the technological tools that we are going to use. Then we develop, we come up with a plan, right? We assemble the contents, we start integrating the technology to see if they work, if they are appropriate. We select or we produce the materials that are going to be used in our flipped classrooms. We implement, then in the implementation you know, stage, we implement flipped classroom. And remember that this uh, requires to do something inside the classroom and also outside the classroom. But we have to prepare students and train them on how the tools work. We cannot assume that as our students belong to this uh, digital era and they are uh, digital natives, we cannot assume that they can all uh, use these tools or resources effectively, okay? And as teachers, we have to make sure that all the resources are in place, that all the resources that we selected are the ones that are appropriate for our students. And finally, in the evaluation stage, we evaluate not just the student's performance, but also we evaluate the results of the flipped classroom, okay? And we have to provide opportunities for feedback. We have to check and we have to verify if actually this model um, helps us and helps our students, if it works or if it doesn't work, okay? This is basically what uh, we would have to do. We have to analyze. We, it's not that easy to decide like, okay, now from tomorrow, I'm gonna start with, uh, with the flipped classroom model. You have to do this like process of analyzing if you can actually do it, if the institution can actually be part of this, okay? Okay, so believe it or not, there are seven types of flipped classroom because so far we have said that, uh, uh, the flip classroom is uh, to invert, right, uh, the traditional uh, classroom model uh, through a new one with the use of technological uh, resources, right? So there are seven different types, but more than seven different types, I would say that uh, they, they are, there are seven different goals of flip classroom, okay? So the first one is the standard inverted classroom. So here the students are assigned the homework of watching video lectures or reading or audio audiobooks right or any other materials that are relevant for the next day's class okay so during class time the students practice what they have learned through the traditional activities that you usually do in your classrooms okay and the teachers are there to uh, provide feedback and additional one-to-one -one time um, with the students that is the standard inventor classroom. The second one is the discussion-oriented flipped classroom. So here, teachers assign the video lectures as well as any other video or reading material related to the subject, okay? Think, for example, about, uh, think of TED Talks or YouTube videos or other resources. So the class time is then especially devoted to the discussion and the exploration of the subject. 
this can be especially useful with the subjects where the context is everything. In our case, it would work perfectly for English, for art, for history, for example. This is a very, very good type of flipped classroom, the discussion-oriented flipped classroom, especially with teenagers or with adults, right? We cannot uh, uh, require this or ask our, our younger students to uh, go deep into a reflection process. Number three is the demonstration-focused flipped classroom uh, type. This um, type is especially for those subject that, subjects sorry, that require students to remember and repeat activities exactly as they saw it or as they watched it, like chemistry, like physics, like math, for example. So it is really helpful, helpful here to have a video, um, a video demonstration, right? so that students can be able to uh, uh, pause and rewind or fast forward, right? As they are required to repeat a process, exactly the same that they watch it. Um, so this is basically the demonstration focus flipped classroom model. Number four, we have the faux flipped classroom model. If you're not familiar with that concept, faux is like a, an imitation or like a uh, fake the flipped classroom model, to put it in a way, right? Because this approach, this one is perfect for younger students. Younger students may not be yet prepared, right? Or may not be appropriate for younger students, the flipped classroom uh, yet. So what happens here is, is that um, the teacher assigns a video, right? But not for the students just to watch it at home at their own time. The, the students watch the video in class with the teacher, okay? Um, the video lectures in class. So the teacher gives the students here the opportunity to review the material at their own pace, but the teacher is also there and is able to move from one student to, the, to another to offer individual support uh, for each one of them, okay? So that is like the fake flipped classroom model. Number five is the group-based flipped classroom. And this model adds a new element uh, that is going to help students uh, to learn. And that new element is the students, right? Because they have each other. The class here with this model would start the same way that the others do with the lecture videos or other resources before the class. But the shift happens when the students come to class and they team up and they work together on that day assignment, okay? So in, with this format, we are encouraging students to learn from one another and help each other, and not only to learn what the right answer is or was, uh, but also to explain to a peer, right? To their peers, why those answers are right, okay? So this is the group-based uh, flipped classroom model. Uh, projects, you can work projects here with this. Um. Classroom model and this works um, perfectly also with older students. Um, and in some courses, the flipped classroom can actually eliminate the need for classroom time at all. Uh, so this is basically what we see uh, with college, with universities, right? Uh, because teachers actually share lecture videos for the students to view, to watch, they assign material, they collect, uh, and the teachers collect the work via online, right? Uh, because universities are very used to work with these uh, learning management systems. Uh, so then what happens is that students just attend to class, uh, on their schedule time, basically to this one-to-one -one interaction with the teacher, mm -hmm. or with also with you know with the rest of their their peers, their their the rest of the students. And uh, sorry, the last one is flipping the teacher. This one is very very interesting. It means that uh, all the video or uh, all the um, digital uh, resources created for a flipped classroom doesn't necessarily have to begin and end with the teachers. 
students can also make use of uh, the video uh, to demonstrate also their proficiency. So uh, you can assign students to, you know, role play activities to show their uh, competency, right? Or they, you can ask them to film themselves presenting a new subject or doing something or working with a new skill. So this is a mean of, of like teach the teacher right uh this is a way teachers have also to check and to verify a students competence and students proficiency mm -hmm. okay Kime, are we good so far yes you let me know if if i'm maybe going too fast or yes we are we do have a couple of questions but i think it might be better if we address them at the end yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, have, it has to do, they have to do with discussing advantages and disadvantages. So maybe we, will we can see do that uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes. later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Later, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, so uh, I think it's better if we wait um, until the end, because we will have, of course, a couple of minutes for uh, sharing and making comments and questions if you, if you have them, okay? Uh, thank you, Jime. So um, I'm sure we are all very familiar with this lovely pyramid here. We have Bloom's taxonomy. Um, and of course, we have, we have heard this from almost every teacher and every professor in the world. And we know that we should try to assess the upper levels of Bloom's taxonomy, right? We all want the students to apply and analyze and evaluate. And of course, we want them to create too. We know that in theory, right? But in practice, it gets a little bit complicated sometimes. And most of the time, what we expect from our students is that they can complete challenging tasks without our, without our guidance or assistance. So basically, this is what happens right in the traditional model what we are seeing here um so why why is it that we do these so-called easy assignments right that require remembering and understanding uh with our students in the class and we ask them to um do like the hard stuff at home or without our help what happens if uh, the students don't finish their homework or if they don't understand a concept at home or if there is uh, no one at home to um, help them, right? So uh, what the flipped classroom model um, allows us or allows the students is that they can access the lower levels of Bloom's, you know, understanding and remembering at their own time, at their own pace, at home or outside the classroom, and provide the opportunity to practice the knowledge in challenging and engaging tasks with their teachers and with their peers, okay, in the class. So remember that um, flipped classroom is, you know, working with technologies and working with digital tools and so on. So Remember this taxonomy, but also take a look at this one. Probably some of you are familiar with this. So Bloom's digital taxonomy, taxonomy sorry, is about using the technology and digital tools to facilitate learning. So this kind of student engagement is uh, defined with these power verbs that can be used for, for almost every lesson planning and also um, curriculum mapping, okay? So you can use these verbs which cover the span of the taxonomy that go from the lower, here we have the lower order thinking skills to the higher order thinking skills. They are very little, I'm sure that maybe you are not able to read them. So these are some of the verbs, just to show you an example of some of the verbs that uh, you, would, you would find here in the Taxonomy. For example, for the first category, we have these, uh, you know, digital empowered verbs like networking or Googling, right? We also have in the second one for understanding, we have tweeting or tagging. In the next one, we have computing, uploading. These are, of course, some, some examples that I, I selected because I found them uh, interesting. 
We have advertising, surveying in the, in the um, process of analyzing. Then for evaluating, we have verbs like commenting or posting, right? And finally, for creating, we have blogging or podcasting or video blogging also could be or filming, right? Everything that has to do with create a product, right? Okay, so question, and I'm sure that most of you or some of you are asking this, right? Why flipping the classroom? Why flipping the classroom? Why it could be, you know, uh, a useful approach to use, uh, what, what, what could be the benefits, for example. So there is a wide range of potential benefits of implementing the flipped classroom, okay? And some of them, of course, that I'm sure that are uh, many more, but some of them are the following. Um, because flipping the classroom provides opportunities for reflection for both teacher and students. It can be used to check the most important concepts like clarifying doubts or questions or correcting mistakes. Now, think about this for a minute because if we think of everything that is happening in which uh, we are not sure if our students are going to be able to finish the school year, right? Now we would have to focus on what are the most important contents that we need to cover before the school year finishes, right? So maybe flipped classroom here is appropriate, right? Because we're going to focus on those most important things that we want our students to uh, learn, right, by the end of the year. Um, it helps students also to review contents. Mm -hmm. It fosters peer learning and social interaction, yes, because although um, if they're doing something outside in class time, even, I mean, even if we cannot do like class time in the school, what, that it is what, ha what is happening now, right? Uh, if you have a way to communicate with your students, you are still, you know, fostering peer learning and social interaction or virtual <laughs> interaction. Um, it gives the students the opportunity to work collaboratively through projects, right? And projects, you know, projects take takes time. So you can have your students working for a, a certain period of time in a project. It teaches also uh, the students the sense of becoming more responsible for their own learning process. And that is also very, very important if we think also of 21st century skills. We have to teach also uh, a way of teaching our students or showing our students become more responsible for their process. And definitely, definitely increases students' commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we know the benefits. How do we do it, right? How to teach effectively if we want to use um, this uh, model or this approach. And here are some suggestions or some tips. Uh, first of all, you have to communicate your students the reasons why you are using flipped classroom. And you have to explain why you think this methodology will make the, the, the learning process easier for them, okay? You have to communicate effectively the reasons why you believe that this is the way. You have to offer incentives also, so students can prepare for class uh, in advance, right? I'm not talking about incentives, incentives like, I'm gonna give you candy, yeah. although that works sometimes, but that's not the idea, right? Uh, like if we have time, we'll watch a video, a video maybe that is not related to the lesson or to the class, but we'll watch a, a movie clip or something that uh, will help, you know, with the environment also of the class. You have to establish clear connections between what your you have to make sure that all the activities are well defined and are well structured and that they are aligned to your learning outcomes right to your objectives you have to give students enough time to carry out their assignments and their tasks, okay? Try not to put pressure on them. 
you have to offer, you know, uh, guidance and you have to facilitate also the learning process. And most importantly, you have to use user-friendly and accessible technology. Mm -hmm. User-friendly for you also, and user-friendly for your students. And as uh, all the process, right, we face and we encounter some challenges. And of course, this is not the exception you are going to face if you decide to go on this path you are going to face some challenges uh, in relation to the flipped classroom model so some of the challenges that might come up have to do with the students preparation students may not be prepared to work with flipped classroom so and that is part of the remember the adding model right the the analysis that we have to do we have to verify and analyze if our institution or if our students, if our uh, classes, if our lessons, students are prepared to work with this model, okay? As you have also, to ha you have to select and, or, you, or you have to produce the material that you're going to be uh, using with your students, that requires time and effort, right? So that might also be a challenge. Though we know, and we will see that in a couple of minutes, we know that there are a number of websites and digital resources that are already made and ready for us, uh, it still you know, requires our time in terms of selecting and reviewing and checking the material that we're going to use, if it is appropriate or not. Um, flip, flip lessons require preparation in an appropriate combination of the elements again, inside and outside the classroom, right? They have to be a perfect match there. Uh, it might not be, you know, appropriate for all the contents or for all the subject area, areas, but in our case, it works. You know, English is one of the best examples uh, to use um, flipped classroom. <clears throat> Um, the students might not understand the value or the importance of the process immediately, right? So if you want to use flip classroom or if you're already doing it, maybe the ones who are familiar with this methodology uh, maybe are going to agree that uh, you won't see like uh, the positive results at the beginning at first. It takes time also. It takes time. That's why you have to be constantly assessing and evaluating the process to see if we have to do some adjustments there. Um, yes, equipment and access to videos or to digital resources may be a problem. Yes, so that is also something to bear in mind, to take into account that if your institution or if you know that your students don't have access to technology at home, that might be a huge challenge. So that's why um, you have to bear this in mind, right? Because one thing is that you have access to these resources and to the technology, but you have to think if your students also are going to have access. So if they don't, uh, you have to think twice whether you want to go uh, with flipped classroom or not. Um, in class time, right, what you do in the classroom, uh, especially with those types of flipped classroom that require, you know, students get together in groups or to work with peers or collaboratively. Sometimes, uh, well, there might be some difficulties with the space, right, in the classroom if you want to make them group, uh, work in groups, right? That is also an, uh, an element that you have to evaluate. And most importantly, flipped flip classroom requires a deep, you know, change in the role of both students and teachers, but um, also if the institution wants to go, you know, with, uh, with the flipped classroom, it requires, you know, deep change. So, so there had to be willingness mm -hmm, to change. Okay, so um, the most simple way uh, to work with this approach is through the use of videos, through audiobooks, through interactive activities. Of course, there are a lot of other uh, tools maybe and resort, uh, uh, resources, right? Um, but these are like the uh, basic ones, videos, audiobooks, and interactive activities. So what I'm about to show you are um, 
some of the many, many tools and websites and so on where you can find videos or other resources that are going to support your teaching if you want to go with the flipped classroom. Okay, so for example, we have one here that is the CAN Academy, uh, which provides personalized learning. Uh, you have also cross-curricular content and many other tools that are going to empower not just teachers, but also students and sometimes the community. You know, parents can get involved too here. And it's, and it's non-profit, okay? Um, next one, maybe some of you are familiar with this. Uh, this is videolectures.net. This is a very interesting source of lectures and also news and news, sorry, and uh, interesting thing, uh, it is supported by UNESCO. So there you have a lot of, you know, um, video lectures. The, the thing is that, remember that I said just a couple of minutes ago that it requires time. You have to go online and also and browse lectures, you know, watch them first, you know, analyze them if they are appropriate or not. That is another example, videolectures.net. Next one does not require much, you know, or further explanation. TED Talks, right? Um, and you, you can see there you have a number of different, you know, topics from technology, science, you know, communication, uh, child development, business, personal growth, you know, a lot of topics there to choose from. TED Talks. Um, this one very famous. I'm sure that all of us have used at least once in our classes, you know, videos from YouTube. Mm -hmm. The most famous one. And here we have Richmond's own uh, um, resources and tools that can help support your flipped classroom. Um, maybe you, uh, the ones who had the possibility to attend Paola Guevara's uh, webinar last week, uh, could see all uh, the important and interesting features English Attack uh, has, right? Because it was designed by gaming experts, but in collaboration with teachers, right? So English Attack, uh, it's a lot of fun, but it has a, a highly effective approach on learning because the lessons, right, combine movie clips and language games. So what happens is that students get immersed in the learning experience and they uh, my, uh, and it helps maintaining the student's motivation too. There you have the three main uh, areas that you will find, video boosters, photo vocabs, the verb touch game, etc. And although students uh, can work at their own pace and they can work from home, teacher can, teachers can still, you know, uh, monitor and keep track of students' progress, okay? There you have some of the videos or this, the series of uh, different exercises that go from exploring vocabulary, developing of skills, grammar practice, right? Um, you can also, have, well, teachers can uh, apply uh, filters if they want to search or browse for specific videos that can go from beginners to adults, uh, to kids, you know, if you want business or grammar points, etc. Same happens with the visual uh, uh, dictionaries, right? You can, you know, still uh, browse and search the one, the ones that you actually need for your students, right, to practice. There is also a school area, yes, and in the school area, uh, teachers can select their students, can create their classes, can manage also the classes, and you can assign the exercises, you can assign tests, tests here are in the format of course of video boosters, right? So you don't, you, you won't have the traditional evaluation, but you would have it in the format of a video. And that uh, basically is going to give you uh, an overview of your classes, of your students' um, English proficiency level, because uh, they will provide, you know, the information in terms of the CEFR uh, framework. Next one is my own, and I'm sure that, well, maybe this is for the people, um, I mean, these tools, probably for some of you are familiar, you're familiar with these tools, but for the ones who are not familiar, um, my own, first of all, uh, we have one option, which is the my own reader. There you can see that it is this platform or this literacy environment actually that gives students access to more than 6,000, you know, books. 
which are matched to students' interests, to students' grades, to students' lexi level. So uh, what, this, what students can do here is that besides reading, you know, they can interact with the book, they can intervene them also. But most importantly, and, and I really like this, like this romantic, you know, side of my own, is that it, the main goal is to foster and promote reading for pleasure too, okay? And it's perfect for this time too, because students can read like 24 seven. Uh, so as you can see, beside reading, you know, they can also listen to what they read at the same time. So it's an audio book. They have the tools there to interact with the book and to intervene them actually. In the classroom area, the teachers have, uh, well, they can, again, the same as English Attack, they can manage their students, they can manage their groups, they can manage their classes, they can create projects. And there is a number of reports that you can download. Like this is an example, right? A number of reports that are going to give you useful information to make further decisions with your students, right? Um, and this is the other option, the Mayo News. Mayo News, oh, sorry. Mayo News provide digital news articles for students that go from, here we have timely topics, you know, current events, and the articles incorpor incorporate also multimedia. Right? They include videos, slideshows, photo galleries, etc. And um, the topics cover different categories that can go from space science, fashion, arts, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, teachers and students can have access to each day's edition. For example, this picture, I, I, I did a screenshot yesterday because yesterday was Earth Day, right? So um, they, you will have access or students will have access to five different articles each day, five different articles each day. And very, uh, something very interesting that in all uh, five articles, or in, in every day's edition, you know, comes with a teacher guide, a teacher's guide that is going to have useful information in terms of the recommended grade levels for each article, their lexile level, the word count, and teachers have the answers of the quiz, they have templates, you know, they can still, you know, um, uh, have additional material and to support the, uh, the activity or working with the news article. Each article also comes with these tools that include the audio, geographical information, slideshows, facts. Teachers can also create projects using the Mayo News. There you have the, the, the questions, the multiple choice questions students have at the end, right? Uh, so you see, students can do this at their own time, at home, you know, whenever they have time to do it. And then if they have time to get together, whether it is in class, or through you know, a video conference lesson, uh, you can go over the question and have like this, uh, some kind of debate and reflection uh, to check why they selected the answers they selected. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, and last but not least, we have our very own virtual learning environment, right? The regional learning platform shares some of the features of an LMS, right? But it's not a management system per se, okay? We will see uh, the main features of the learning platform. Teachers have access to all the class materials that are going to complement, right, their lesson and their courses. And they have all the additional resources, whether to use online or some of them are available to download as well. They can assign right, uh, regular interactive activities to the students or to consolidate some contents related to the course, of course. Um, they can manage the assessments, the evaluations, right? Uh, uh, so students can do an online if you prefer it that way. Uh, they have the Marbook, right? The Marbook allows teachers to have six full traceability of their students' progress. And in that sense, as I said before, it helps teachers to, um, like they have a way to identify, you know, strong or weak points. So uh, in that way, you can make ongoing or future changes in your teaching practices. That is the Marbook. Uh, in the forum, well, this is a, 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 an easy way uh, for teachers to interact 
right, with students. And you can uh, come up with new topics and you can make your students put their thoughts and their ideas there and you can exchange and comment, right? Um, so this work now for, you know, social or physical distancing, right? You can still get in touch with your students through these kind of tools, right? And the last, the last one, the uploads uh, section, actually this is, uh, this section provides a perfect tool to share content with your students, right? So if you're going to use Flip Classroom methodology, you can share all those contents, right? Or the video lectures or um, uh, some links to specific videos, uh, to a news article or something like that. And you can use the upload section to share material with your students. And of course, the material that is going to be related to what you are teaching, right? So this is, a, this is actually a good way of um, sharing material with students, uh, thinking about the flipped classroom, right? Uh, and and uh, of course, if you um, need a richer, right, a much richer source of information in terms of learning solution, in terms of softwares or websites or any other resources to teach online, you can visit this uh, link. I, I actually, I, I, I put the link up there. If you want, you can make me take a picture of the screen or a screenshot if you want. Um, this is uh, provided by UNESCO, right? Uh, and they came up with this list of distant learning solutions, specifically now in terms of, you know, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So here we have some of the um, uh, examples or some of the items in the list that you would find, like for example, digital learning management systems or systems that are built for use on basic mobile phones or self-directed learning content. And I also selected this last one because I think that uh, it gives us an idea of all the websites or solutions that we could find online uh, like collaboration platforms that support like li live video communication, like the one we're using right now, you know, that we have at Zoom, we have Skype, Meet, hang Hangout Meets, and so on. Look at the second one, tools for teachers to create, you know, uh, digital learning content. And the last one is an external repositories of distant, uh, distance learning solutions. So you can go, you know, to and visit the UNESCO's uh, website and you will find all that information. And of course, it's from a reliable source of information. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I, I believe that basically that is what I wanted to share with you here. I have, uh, I designed this work cloud that somehow summarizes uh, some of the most important or the main you know, concepts related to these uh, kind of approaches or methodologies. There we have that we have innovation, technology, class instruction. We have a lot of benefits, right? We saw them and I, I'm sure there are plenty more benefits to work with a uh, flipped classroom. Um, and yes, well, I think that basically that is what I wanted to share uh, with the teachers. Hime, um, over to you. Uh, to see if um, maybe, maybe teachers want to make comments or suggestions. Uh, if they have further questions, you let me know. Yeah, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, uh, they're asking here, where did you create your presentation? Is it a PowerPoint? Oh, yes, <laughs> it is a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. A simple PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. They're saying it was a very nice PowerPoint. For puzzles oh, and crosswords, you. there is a recommendation there because you're writing, teachers. You probably didn't see it. To create puzzles, you can go to J2E. J, la letra J, number two. Ah, uh, yeah. Letra e. Pauli, maybe you can tell mm -hmm. them something about J2E. Or Juli, or let me. Or maybe yes, if Juli is there, yes. yes let me let me open yeah. Juli's 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 uh, My, microphone. Juli. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> um, about J2E. Um, J2E. It's um platform that we Richmond We Green Alliance um, from Global Department. 
Um, so there you can create different kind of games, uh, crosswords, spelling contests. Um, um, if um, you can have a month tryout and it's for free, um, and it's like a huge uh, cloud where you can create different kind of themes, different kind of classes. You can create PowerPoints, videos, everything. So the game part is like really neat and 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 it it can be recorded. So they can they have to figure out which word they are uh, doing the crossword, doing the puzzle about, or you can create only like the tip for um, checking uh, the word. So more than welcome to check J2E uh, YouTube channel and J2E. J2E. J2, with, with so, the number yeah. two, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, exactly, that's the one. Um, mm -hmm. Share with you the website um, where you can find some videos on the chat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we have to leave it for the information? Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, what we're getting in the chat room now, it's lots of mm -hmm. things. Pauli, thank you very much. Oh, I'm going to yeah, turn on my camera now so I can see <laughs> there's also <laughs> thank you, thank you, Pauli. I do want to thank you for a very informative and beautiful presentation. Oh, also thank you. the teachers that are always joining us. Huli yes. just posted the J2E URL into the chat room. You can Fantastic. call me from there. Uh, once again, thank you. Thank you everyone for finding the time to join us. Yes. Pauli, looking forward to your repetition next week as well. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Thank Love you. Love to. Love to. <laughs> yes, thank you everyone. Hime, uh, this um, uh, webinar will be uh, was recorded, right? So Yes, uh, yes it was. Oh, yes, it, it was it was recorded. Your local Richmond representative mm -hmm. should be sharing with you teachers access to the recordings of our webinars. Please feel free to contact them for access to the recordings. Uh, and then Fantastic. again, thank you. Thank you, Pauli, very much. And thank you, teachers, for joining us today again. Gracias a todos. No, thank uh, you. Yes, thank you for joining, for taking your time. Yes. <laughs> it was lovely to um, be with you. <laughs> thank you, Pauli. So, everyone, see you next time. Buena tarde para todos. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.